In the last video, we looked at integers in C. Now let's look at how we deal with real valued numbers in C. Again, you don't need to write any code. You do need to wget the code I've already written from www.sorlotics.com slash uploads dash floats dot C. And now we'll edit that and take a look. Okay. We need to include in a new package float.h because this will describe the limits on the types of real values that we're going to be looking at. Uh, there are three main types of real valued variables in C. The float, the double, and the long w. Long double. On my machine, a float is 32 bits, a double is 64 bits, and a long double is 96 bits. But again, that's machine specific. So I wrote some code for you to be able to check that. We will again use very, a couple of print statements with the size of command to check the size of the float, the size of the double, and the size of the long double. Remember, size of gives you the size of these variable types in bytes. So by multiplying by 8, we get bits. OK, float.h, which is up here, defines a number of important constants such as the min and max for each one of these variable types. So again, I put up some set up some print statements to tell me the smallest float and the largest float. It looks like I'm doing the same thing twice, but I'm not. I'm using two different ways in printf to display floating point variables. One is percent %f for floating point and the other one is percent %e for exponential notation. And when we run this, you'll see the difference. Sometimes you'll want to use floating point representation. Sometimes you'll want to use, you want to use exponential notation. OK. And what do I mean by the smallest float? This is often confused. The smallest float is not the most negative float. The smallest float is the smallest absolute value that's representable by the machine. OK. That's float min. And float max is the maximum value for the float. Okay, similarly with doubles, we have the smallest double, which again is the smallest absolute value, value that you can represent, which goes from double min to double max. And then finally, we're going to get some truly large numbers with long doubles. The notation in printf is percent capital LF and percent capital LE for float, long float and long exponential. And you see a long double min and a long double max. OK, let's compile this code. I'm going to say 8 out out, but I'm going to pipe it to a command called more, which is used when you have code that's too long for one screen full. More will allow you to page through the file, the standard output, as it comes out onto the terminal. And you'll see why, because some of these numbers are very big. OK. On my machine, a float uses 32 bits, a double uses 64, a long double uses 96 bits. OK, the smallest float appears to be 0, according to floating point representation, but that's only because it's sending out a limited number of digits. It really isn't 0. It's actually a very small number, a little bigger than 0, which is basically in the range of 10 to the negative 38th. Okay. The largest float is this very large number here, and that's printed using floating point notation. Or again, if we use exponential notation, it is 3 times, like, times 10 to the 38th. Similarly with doubles, again, this is not quite accurate. It is not 0, but it is some small value just greater than 0, in this case on the range of 10 to the negative 308. Here is the largest double, again, a very big number in the range of 10 to the positive 308. OK, long doubles are excruciatingly big. Um, again, the smallest is not really 0, but is 10 to the negative 4932 in value. And the longest, the largest long double is the following number. Which is in the range of 10 to the 4932nd. OK. Having been a researcher and scientist for a long time, um, 
Floats usually just don't cut it for scientific research. They're good for things that aren't scientific, but if you need reasonable numeric precision, I would avoid floats. Doubles work quite well most of the time, although not always perfectly. Uh, in those situations where you might need some added accuracy, I would use long doubles. I've rarely had to use long doubles in my life. But they're available, they're a nice feature in C, and I urge you to use them in scientific computation if it's necessary. Okay, let's end this lecture.